Here we are again for another Pro Tools tutorial and this time I'm going to be talking about delay compensation, what it is, when you need to use it and when you might choose to deliberately bypass delay compensation on certain tracks. In this session we've got some drums which are bussed to two auxiliaries, one which has no compression on it and one which has some fairly heavy compression and this is so that we can achieve a parallel compression effect. So first of all here are the drums just straight through the auxiliary with no compression on it. And then we've also got a secondary one, which as you can see has got a couple of plugins on it. This is deliberately excessively compressed, and it sounds like this. So that's got two things on it. It's got the Pro Compressor, and then it's also got Maxim. And Maxim, because it's a look-ahead limiter, is a very delay-intensive plugin. So here's the thing, this is why we need delay compensation. If we run the drums again just through the uncompressed auxiliary, and then we might want to just introduce some of the very compressed version just to give a nice parallel compression effect. But here's the problem. So you can hear that there's a very obvious delay and phasing occurring there. And that's mainly due to the Maxim plugin incurring such a heavy delay on the track. So what we need to do here is to enable delay compensation. And if we go to the options menu, you'll see that at the very bottom there's an option delay compensation. So once we select that, delay compensation will now be on. And if I run this, you'll hear a very clear difference. So the phasing has gone and everything sounds perfectly time aligned. In fact, what's useful is if we actually display the delay compensation in the mix window. So we can do that by going to the view menu, mix window views, delay compensation. And then at the bottom of each track, we have a readout which has three different values on it. The top one is the delay that's been induced on that particular track by the plugins. And as you can see, this one has by far the greatest delay of 1024 samples. That's due to the Maxim plugin. Below that, we've got a user offset. So under certain circumstances, a track can actually misreport its delay compensation, in which case you might need to manually type in a value, either positive or negative, into this user offset just to bring it into time alignment. In my experience this very rarely actually happens, but it can on occasions, and occasionally with third party plugins. Um, finally at the bottom of each track we've got a compensation value, and this represents how much that track has been offset in order to bring it in time alignment with the other tracks in the session. So basically, whichever track has the heaviest delay is highlighted in orange, and then other tracks are offset accordingly. So let's just take a quick listen to what happens if we switch delay compensation off again and then I'll switch it on whilst it's running. And it's quite obvious there to hear the difference with delay compensation off versus with it on. Under certain circumstances, you may even completely exceed the delay compensation available for a session. So Pro Tools can compensate for delays up to a total maximum of 16,383 samples. But there are a few plugins which actually exceed this. And I can show you one example of that. Let's say, for example, I was using something like Waves Z Noise or Z Noise, depending on where you're from. This is really delay intensive. So you can see the delay on this track is 34,702 samples, which is a lot. And it's gone red because red basically means that we've exceeded the maximum available delay compensation for the session. And in that case, what it will actually do is it will offset the other tracks to the maximum possible delay compensation of 16,383. But that's not particularly useful because we've still gone over and tracks are still going to be out of time alignment because you know, this is so heavily over the delay compensation value. So there's a couple of solutions or ways that we can deal with that. One way which is quite straightforward would be to bust this track to another audio track, record it onto that track, completely bypass this one, and then manually offset the recorded result so that it was in perfect time alignment. And so we were no longer running this plugin in real time, but we'd basically printed the effect of it onto another track. Another possible solution would be to bypass delay reporting on this track and then manually offset it on the track itself. So I'm just going to demonstrate that now. 
To bypass the reported delay on any track, you can do it two ways. One way is to right click on the delay indicator and choose disable plugin delay. Or the other way is to hold down control and command and click the same indicator and it achieves the same result. So now you can see that all of the other tracks are no longer offset by that huge amount. They're purely compensating for the other plugins in the session. And what we'll now need to do on this track is to move the audio back by 34,702 samples. So I'll just go to the track, make it a little bit larger. Maybe I'll switch the session into samples and then make sure we've got the cursor on that track. Let's just zoom in a little bit and then I'll make a selection that's 34,702 samples. You can see that at the start there. And I could then maybe do it in shuffle mode, just move that back. What would probably be a good idea here, actually, even before doing that, would be to create a duplicate playlist. So I might just undo that. Let's just uh, create a duplicate and then I'll add the word offset to this. What this means is when I do delete that and offset it, if I decide later on that you know I want to revert back, I can just choose the other playlist and it's easy for me to switch back to the unaffected audio. So what I've basically done there is manually compensated for this delay whilst the delay reading for that track is actually bypassed. Here's a couple of other points about delay compensation. I'm just going to create a new audio track and on this one, once again, I'm going to use the Maxim plugin just because it's uh, quite delay intensive. And one thing to consider about audio tracks is that when they're either in import monitoring mode or record enabled, then the delay compensation for those tracks is automatically suspended and the track compensation indicator, as you can see here, will display zero. And the idea behind this is that when you're actually recording something or monitoring a live input, it minimizes the latency on that track, which is fine most of the time. However, if you want to continuously apply delay compensation, so thereby bypassing automatic suspension, what you can do is control and command click again, but this time on the compensation indicator, and you'll see it turns blue. And now even if the track is in record enable or input monitoring, delay compensation will still be applied to that track. So I'm just going to do a really quick summary of what I've just covered. So firstly, delay compensation is activated from the options menu. If you want to display it in the mix window, go to the view menu, choose mix window views, delay compensation. You can see it here. If you want to suspend delay compensation on any particular track, control command click on the delay indicator. If you want to permanently enforce delay compensation on a track, even when it's in record mode, then control command click on the compensation indicator. And if for whatever reason you've manually put in a user offset, so let's just type one in here, and I want to just toggle between that being on and off, I can do the old control command click trick again, but this time I'm clicking on that and essentially that's bypassing the user offset and then bringing it back again. So those are a few little useful tips relating to delay compensation in Pro Tools. Let me know if you've got any questions. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.